what El Cap is for big wall climbing and Catalonia is for sport climbing, Rocklands is for bouldering. This is a random boulder, chilling with a few other boulders, in a little patch of boulders, in a massive boulder field that stretches to the horizon. This is the pass, one of many, many boulder fields. You get the idea, there is a lot to do here. Three hours north of Cape Town, Rocklands is situated in the Cedarburg Mountains. To get here, most people fly to Cape Town, hire a car and drive north. Rocklands without a car is a little tricky and you'll find yourself having to rely on friends and it can be hard to organise getting to places which are a bit further away. Insurance for your car is advised, many people have messed up their hire cars here and the roads tend to be quite bumpy and heavy wearing on the cars which are not usually suitable for the terrain. There are quite a few options for where to stay. The Pacquise is a popular campsite and costs about 100 rounds a night. It can be cheaper to rent a hut with a bunch of people at a variety of places, but the Pacquise is probably the most social place uh, and you can walk into a few high quality areas. There's a like, kitchen area where you can cook your food in the pack house, but also use it on the braai when they have it in the evening. And I'm just getting some burritos. Uh, we're in Clan William. This is where you basically buy all your food and stuff. The main shop here is the Super Spa. So near, so far, also in South Africa, Super Spa. Um, and it's just got like, the biggest range of everything you need, really. Just on my way to the hen house. The hen house is a nice place to kind of get some Wi-Fi done, some work. It usually works sometimes. And you can walk over there from the pack house through kind of the backcountry area. Rest days. South Africa is an amazing country and sometimes you shouldn't let climbing get in the way of having a good time. This is Lambert's Bay and here there is an all you can eat fish buffet. This is this place here, it's outdoors, you want to bring a jacket because it would be cold. Um, but it's a really beautiful place and it's kind of nice just to get out of get out of Rocklands and to see the coast and be in a different environment. Always rice. Yeah, Always rice. Oh my goodness. Um, destroys it. 
This is crazy. This is really oh, <laughs> there is so much fish <laughs> and food here. So it's much. insane. How are you finding the fish buffet? Nate, calamari. Calamari. <laughs> Would you like some calamari, sir? Yes. <laughs> oh. There we go. <laughs> oh, <that's> cold. <laughs> What are they? What are they kicking now? They're steaks. They're massive. In is there the pack house, which is just where my tent is. We have lots of competitions, food, uh, reacts really good. Also, you can go to Cape Town and around. There's like amazing activities that you can do. When I'm in Cape Town, I stop off in Big Backpackers. It's like a hostel here. Um, it's got really nice sort of ambiance, atmosphere. There's like good group activities, but also these nice little areas that you can just kind of get away from it. Um, and it's pretty good value for money. So I'm walking through Cape Town and I like to do long walks in cities just through you know, places you wouldn't normally see as a tourist. And this place is kind of rough. There's some pretty bad places over here in the park and some guys just injecting themselves with probably heroin or something. Pretty grim. Uh, and this whole way through here just thinks of shit because the homeless people got nowhere to go. So we're just going along this kind of embankment. It would be really pretty if it wasn't for the poverty. It's quite interesting here. Here we have Edgar the Seventh. Yeah, he's a British monarch. And on the other side, there he is, Nelson Mandela, waving. It's kind of like the older than you. Uh, it's like a little market. I don't actually know where I am, um, but I think I'm pretty central now. So much of Cape Town has these uh, just electric fences everywhere, um, all around residential buildings. I mean, it kind of shows that the issues they have here with security are pretty serious. Uh, like you need to have razor wire and electric fences around every, basically every house on the way up to every balcony. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. So today I'm going to go and do one of the main things I want to do in Cape Town, which is shark cage diving. Should be pretty cool. Amazing um, just to come to face to face with a few great white sharks. Um, 
I think that's the experience I won't forget for a while. And I'm just warming up, it's so cold in the sea and the wetsuit doesn't fit amazingly so you can feel the water sloshing around so yeah it's getting pretty chilly. Cool, this is the first time I have seen whales and they're just out there. It's amazing. The wildlife in this part of the world is just absolutely incredible. Um, this is kind of seascape here where these people live. Just what an amazing coastline. Kind of somehow like hospitable but at the same time full of these incredible creatures. Um, so cool. Really. Yeah, really cool. You're in Cape Town and you have a problem with a finger, pulley, back, shoulder, whatever. Um, go and check out Jess, she's a really good physio, the link is below. Um, and incredibly good value for money. And the reality is, regardless if you're not injured, you should probably actually get checked out by her. Because she'll tell you where there's a lot of opportunity to make your muscles work better or your, you know, just basically become a better climber, become stronger and stabilise your body so it works for you um, rather than have muscles work against you. So I would highly recommend um, checking Jess out and checking her practice out. It's here in Cape Town, uh, in Muselberg and it's, it's worth a trip just for the, just for the view. It's beautiful. Using your stabilising muscles properly allows for your power muscles to do power instead of stabilising and then trying to do power and pull off and move on top of it. Yeah, yeah. So if you can get your stabilising muscles working properly, then that alone will go a long way for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Interesting. Welcome to the paradise of orange sandstone boulders as far as the eye can see. Uh, it's really an amazing place for pretty much any climber. I mean I'm not much of a boulder, this is my first bouldering trip and uh, yeah I think it's just an incredible place for any climber to come and just enjoy climbing. So the style of climbing in Rockins is incredibly powerful. Lots of big shoulder moves, lots of heel hooks, lots of steep climbing. There is like vertical stuff and slabby stuff as well, but it tends to be more overhanging stuff that you're going for, wrists, like compression, uh, bigger holds. That's, I, th I think it like really suits indoor climbers a lot. If I was gonna do another trip to Rocklands, I'd prepare slightly different to how I prepared for this trip. I definitely do a lot more shoulder stability work um, definitely like stuff on the gymnastic rings and maybe more specific boulder problems back home. I'd focus less on finger strength as I usually do and more on like compression uh, and yeah sort of like bigger more powerful moves. I'd also do a lot of core body tension training because uh, quite a lot of the time I find that I'm like either heel hooking or toe hooking really far away from my body and really extended positions. And it, the hard problem that I'd recommend, which is my favourite problem I've done here, is called Roixol. And that is font 70 plus, font 80, something around that grade. And the reason I like it is it's just like, it feels like something like created in an indoor climbing wall. It starts in these really cool pockets, you've got a really cool sequence of moves, got these explosive, powerful moves that you do on a heel hook. And then you have this really extended move where your body is like full stretch. You grab a little crimp of your left hand, you're on a slope with your right, and you have to hold this wild swing, which just seems totally insane. And then once you've held the swing, your hand has to sort of camp us up to get to the, the next hand, hold, and then you top out with the knee bar. It's just like, it, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, you could never imagine that rock could form in that way, and that moves could be done in that way on rock. It's really cool.
hope you enjoyed this little Rocklands guide. It's pretty damn amazing, so save those dollars and get your ass here for next season.